My talk will focus on multipolarity as an expression of class struggle. And to begin, I want to say just in the post-Soviet era, it has become fashionable to strip all geopolitical developments of their class roots. Wars have been explained away by bourgeois propaganda, the war on terror, great power competition, in matters of quote-unquote national security. The Ukraine crisis is a case in point. Russia's military operation in Ukraine has been labeled a war without a cause by Western detractors. But underneath the cacophony of capitalist ideology and propaganda is a class struggle occurring on a global stage for multipolarity, where the Russia-Ukraine conflict is but one flashpoint. Vladimir Lenin is perhaps the most well-known Marxist revolutionary to advance a modern theory of international relations rooted in the class struggle brought about by imperialism. Lenin concluded that the ascendancy of monopoly and finance capital divided the world into colonies and oppressed nations. The self-determination of these nations would therefore form a core pillar in the struggle for socialism worldwide. Without self-determination, workers and oppressed people of the world would suffer immeasurable losses from the scourge of colonial domination and its triple evils of military occupation, economic plunder, and racial discrimination. Multipolarity is in essence a continuation of the struggle for self-determination in the modern era. After years of imperialist ramblings about the end of history and there is no alternative to neoliberalism, the trend toward a multipolar world is demonstrating that the exact opposite is true. In all corners of the globe, the unipolar dominance of U.S. imperialism is collapsing upon its own contradictions. In Europe, U.S. imperialism threatens to shut the lights out and place what was once the center of capitalist development into a permanent state of decay. In Latin America, insurgent left-wing governments led by Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and others are rejecting U.S. domination in their pursuit of people-centered de socialist development and integration. In Africa, Western plunder and militarization led by the U.S. has led many countries to pursue stronger relations with China and Russia. China and Russia are in the vanguard of the multipolar world. China's socialist governance system has balanced entrance into an unstable, capitalist-dominated world economic system by maintaining state control of the commanding heights of the economy, such as land, energy, transportation, natural resources, and finance. This has allowed China to ascend to the top of the economic ladder as a top innovator of high technology and address socialist imperatives, such as poverty, climate change, and public health. Russia has dug its way out of the disastrous collapse of the Soviet Union to regain national sovereignty and become a major economic and military power in rapid time. While many differences exist between Russia and China, what binds them is a commitment to sovereign development and self-determination. China and Russia's alliance has included steadfast resistance to U.S. and Western sanctions against not just their societies, but also smaller countries in the global south, like the DPRK, Cuba, and Syria. China and Russia have led efforts to seek peaceful re resolutions where the U.S. only makes war. While the U.S. has applied force in its policy towards Syria, Ukraine, and the DPRK to name just a few, China and Russia have positioned themselves as anchors for peace on the UN Security Council and several other multilateral organizations. These include the BRICS, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and the infrastructure projects of the Belt and Road Initiative in the Eurasian Economic Union, both of which offer cooperative pathways to economic integration and development. These efforts on the part of Russia and China arguably form the foundations of multipolarity. But what is a multipolar world exactly? It is a world where multiple systems of development exist, sometimes in contradiction and conflict with each other, other times in cooperation. Some have viewed this development in abstract terms, stripping multipolarity of its class character. This is a monumental error. Multipolarity is not a benign development, but an outgrowth of class struggle. U.S. imperialism's war against multipolarity is a war on self-determination and sovereignty. To U.S. imperialism, unity among the oppressed nations of the world is the foremost enemy to the unipolar dominance required 
to maximize capitalist profit. Thwarting such unity is the principal reason why the U.S. has militarily encircled both Russia and China and placed sanctions on key components of their economies. It is why Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela suffer under starvation sanctions, and leftist movements throughout Latin America have been undermined for seeking collective liberation from the U.S.'s Monroe Doctrine. Furthermore, the U.S.'s militarization of Africa via the U.S. Africa Command is intimately linked to the U.S. NATO war on Libya in 2011, a nation that has had as a central goal the integration of the resource-rich African continent through an independent currency, military, and passport system. U.S. wars in West and Central Asia cannot be separated from the class struggle embodied in multipolarity either. These wars have one goal, to keep the region in chaos. Chaos holds the possibility that integration projects such as the China-led Belt and Road Initiative will be arrested in this key part of the world. The U.S. war on Syria and its continued destabilization campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan, for example, are part of an attempt to block Russia and China's vision for the integration of the region from east to west. Massive hunger, death, and terrorism that have resulted from these wars are merely collateral damage in the larger goal of thwarting genuine independence and self-determination. Now, some may wonder in this intense new Cold War environment whether Russia can seriously be considered a champion of self-determination and sovereignty. After all, the Ukraine crisis has been portrayed by the West as an unquestionable example of Russian aggression that violates international law. Let's be clear. Russia's special military operation in Ukraine does not contradict the central premise that multipolarity is rooted in class struggle. U.S. NATO encroachments along Russia's border since 1991 and the U.S.-backed coup in Ukraine in 2014 created an untenable security situation. Rather than contradict Russia's role in the multipolar world system, the Ukraine crisis has strengthened it by demonstrating just how enormous the stakes of this class struggle truly are. The Ukraine crisis has exposed how the U.S.'s war on multipolarity threatens to bring about a global war even more destructive than the prior two global conflicts of the 20th century, fought among the capitalists for the domination of the planet. By waging ceaseless counterinsurgency war maneuvers meant to provoke Russia and China, the U.S. empire is playing with fire. This is evident in the U.S.'s complete refusal to negotiate with Russia in December of 2021 to prevent the Ukraine crisis from escalating, in its increased military expenditures to both Ukraine and Taiwan over this same period. U.S. imperialism has been the instigator of war and violator of self-determination all along, but it is the wall-to-wall -wall misinformation of the Western corporate media, which has convinced many in North America and Europe to believe otherwise. U.S. imperialism clearly views multipolarity, not from the prism of peaceful coexistence, but as a threat to its continued rule of a financial empire. Progressive and left forces in the West should too. Multipolarity is indeed a class struggle, one characterized by nations and peoples pursuing peaceful, sovereign, and people-centered development in the face of a hegemon willing to use the deadliest forms of economic, political, and military warfare to stop them. The question becomes, which side are we on? The side of the imperialists led by the United States seeking maximum profit for the fewest people and nations, or that of China, Russia, and its allies striving for self-determination and integration in an effort to meet the needs of the people and the planet. Our collective answer will determine whether progressive forces in the West continue to stand by and watch the war on multipolarity unfold, or whether they are organized to follow Lenin's advice and take up the struggle to defeat their own imperialist governments at the root of this problem.